Hello and welcome to this video on how to conduct a parallel analysis when running exploratory factor analysis in the Ampla software. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. The tutorials are usually related to multivariate statistical methods and often include tutorials on how to use the Ampla software. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter and other videos and workshops. So in this video here, I want to show you how you can conduct a parallel analysis for determining the number of factors in exploratory factor analysis when using the M plus software. I have an example output file here where I'm analyzing uh, six variables, two variables belonging to a mental rotations test, and then four variables belonging to a math performance test. And so I want to conduct an exploratory factor analysis here in M plus to see how many factors I need to explain the correlations between those six variables. Would one factor be sufficient or do I need maybe two factors? So I'm extracting a two factor solution by specifying analysis type equals EFA and then um, the, for the numbers here indicate the minimum and maximum number of factors that I want to extract. So in this case, we would get a one factor solution and a two factor solution. The subcommand parallel equals 100 requests the parallel analysis with EFA. And so 100 means that we are going to get an eigenvalue plot that is uh, derived from 100 sets of random numbers that M plus generates. The whole idea behind parallel analysis is that um, when we generate random numbers, the correlations between those variables should be purely spurious, should be purely due to chance. And then from a correlation matrix of random data, we can still derive eigenvalues and we can compare those eigenvalues to the ones that are derived from our actual data. And so for the actual data, there should be substantial correlations between those mental rotations variables and the math variables. And so we should get an eigenvalue plot, a scree plot that looks different, of course, from the eigenvalue plot that we get from random numbers. For random numbers, the eigenvalue plot is expected to be pretty flat. And at some point it will intersect with the eigenvalues that are derived from the actual data. And so then the criterion is that we look at how many eigenvalues are above the intersection for our scree plot for the actual data. And I'll show you that in a minute when we look at the plot here. When you run an EFA in M plus with a parallel command, the output as such for an EFA looks the same as uh, when you would not include this parallel command. So the way to look at the parallel analysis is via the plot option. And so when we specify here plot type equals plot two, you will get a scree plot. And then when you also include the parallel subcommand, then the scree plot will not only include the eigenvalues for the actual data, but will also include the eigenvalues for the random numbers generated in the parallel analysis. So let's take a look at that. And so we can click here on the plot option and then view plots. And then M plus will, M plus will give you those eigenvalues when you click on view. And so here you can see that we have the red in red, we have the eigenvalues for our actual data. This is the typical scree plot. It starts with more substantial eigenvalues here around three and about 1.5, and then goes down to eigenvalues here that are below one. Whereas the parallel analysis eigenvalues that are plotted here, um, they are a lot more flat in terms of their distribution across the different factors. So there are also ones that are above one, the first two, but altogether they are all pretty similar and there are no very substantial um, factors here like we would see for our real data. Now here we have our intersection between the 
um, real data eigenvalues and the parallel analysis eigenvalues. And you can see that there are two eigenvalues for the actual data that are, that are above the intersection here. And so this would then mean that we would retain two factors according to this parallel analysis criteria. So that's to so say that makes sense in this case because we have one test that reflects mental rotation ability and we have another test that is supposed to reflect math performance. So two factors that makes more sense than just a single factor or it also makes more sense than having three factors. So let's take a look at the M plus um, standard output for that solution. There are also other criteria for determining the number of factors. In this case, it's a maximum likelihood factor analysis with continuous data. We have an oblique rotation here, geo min, so we have correlated factors. So let's take a look at what we get in the output. When we scroll down a little bit, you can see there's also a chi-square value given for each solution. The one factor model has a chi-square value that is highly significant. So the one factor model is clearly rejected. The second factor model that or the two factor model, excuse me, is has a much lower chi-square and a much better fit. It is still statistically significant. So 0.05, you would still reject the model. So say at the if you were testing at the 0.05 level, but definitely the two factor model looks a lot better than the one factor model. And plus also offers a chi-square difference test to compare the two models and the chi-square difference test shows that a two-factor model fits significantly better than a one-factor model because that p-value here is also very small for the chi-square difference. The chi-square difference value is very large and so it shows that there's a huge reduction in the chi-square when we extract a second factor. Next we get the eigenvalues that we already saw in the scree plot and then you get the average eigenvalues from the parallel analysis that we also saw in that scree plot and the 95th percentile eigenvalues that again were also shown in this plot so you can compare them here as well or make your own plot. And then we get the usual fit statistics. What you can also use to compare models is um, the Bayesian information criterion, for example, or other information criteria like the AIC, you could compare those values for the one and two class model and then see for which model those are smaller. So for which one, for example, do you get the smaller AIC value and then the model with a smaller AIC value would be preferred. And you can also look at the FIT statistics, the RMSEA, the CFI TLI, and the SRMR. And none of those looks good for the one factor model here. So this is way too high for an RMSEA, and those are way too low for good CFI TLI. And also the SRMR looks a bit high. Typically, we would, we would want to see an RMSEA smaller than or equal to 0.05. We would like to see CFI TLI above 0.95 and we would like to see SRMR smaller than or equal to 0.05, roughly speaking. So the one factor solution isn't a good one, clearly according to um, all those criteria. Let's take a look at the two factor model. The two factor model you will find has a lower AIC value, so that would be preferred. We already saw that it had a much lower chi-square value and it was a significant difference, so two factor model fits significantly better. And RMSEA now is right at that common benchmark that we would like to see CFI and TLI for the two-factor model also look good and the SRMR looks also good. So this would be clearly the preferred solution. And when you look at the standardized or when you look at the uh, factor loadings here, you can see that we have a very clear, clear simple structure. The mental rotations test um, variables load only onto factor one and they have substantial loadings. They have zero loadings or essentially zero loadings on the second factor and for the math variables we have very small loadings on factor one but substantial loadings on factor two so that makes sense. So a two-factor model makes a lot of sense. The two factors are substantially or at least moderately correlated 0.333. So there's a positive association between mental rotation performance and math performance here. And that also is something that we would expect that 
those are positively correlated. So you can see that here, those different criteria all converged, the parallel analysis, the chi-square test and other fit statistics here all pointed to the two class, to the two factor model. And so this is something that then makes it easy to choose this model also because of the loading structure that is very much in line with the desirable simple structure pattern here with high loadings on only one factor, not another factor. So it's a very clear cut example of um, how we can choose a model based on those criteria. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources. And I'll see you next time.